So good morning, everybody, guys. Uh, so performance testing using Load Runner. <clears throat> Before I go any further, let me uh, uh, talk a little bit about my credentials as to what I am and uh, what kind of experience I have so that I can start giving these trainings or I'm eligible for these trainings. You can obviously, you know, uh, can figure it out. Uh, well, I have a full-time master's degree from United States from University of Oklahoma, Norman. And uh, right now I'm an entrepreneur, corporate trainer, and uh, I do take up the projects. And I have uh, tie up with wonderful associations like IT, Elan, and others. Uh, about uh, myself, I have close to 14 years of experience. Uh, um, started my career in US as a manual tester. Then uh, I did automation testing using RFT and QTP, and then jumped into performance testing. From the last probably eight years, I've been doing performance testing. I've, uh, I've worked as a lead, I've worked as a manager, I've uh, handled multiple projects on performance testing with various protocols. And uh, while I was doing that, I started my career as a trainer as well uh, uh, with Infosys. I was a full-time trainer in, an ETA, in a department called ETA with Infosys. And uh, from last five years, uh, I'm just doing only trainings that too specialized in uh, performance testing could it be performance center, load runner, strong runner, low run, and uh, others? Okay. Uh, this is definitely not my first batch. I have handled more than 100 plus batches online, offline, classroom trainings. Um, with that note, we'll get started, folks. <clears throat> now you have joined this course and wondering, like, you know, who is this course for? Uh, well, uh, this course is just perfect for beginners uh, who doesn't have any knowledge in the uh, software industry. Uh, that's perfect for them because it doesn't require too much of coding. It requires obviously a little bit of analytical skills and uh, hard work, definitely. And then, uh, yeah, um, and then the common sense, okay? Uh, that's more impo very important for any testing course, okay? And also, if you are a manual tester and you've been in the industry for a while and you feel that you're better you want to do something better and then uh, you don't like doing anything like an Excel or a Word, uh, you want it to do more, then definitely this is the course. One thing, okay, it's definitely a little challenging than manual testing, but it doesn't require too much of coding. So this is what it is for. And you're a business analyst and you want to make up, uh, you want to move, hang on guys, one second. When I'm doing trainings, you are not supposed to. I'm doing it. Okay, I'm doing it. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, <clears throat> yes, so you are a business analyst and you have been in the industry and you want to make a move to some other field. Yes, this is for them. So. In, in short, I would say that you don't have an experience. Uh, well, this is a very good platform to get into the software industry. You have some experience on other fields and you, you're looking for something better uh, to do, then definitely this is the one, okay? Now, why should I make performance testing as my career? The very first thing that I would like to tell you guys is this point here. A lot of people would want uh, to make more money. And uh, yes, performance testing with Load Runner is one of the way to make more money. Um, I have a lot of students from all over the world and I do talk to them. So <clears throat> uh, what they tell me is when it comes to performance testing and you're working as a contractor, and if you're in US, uh, well, the going rate could be anywhere from $50 to $80 per hour, okay? So, yes, if you, if you are uh, uh, your green card holder and a citizen, yeah, uh, it's all your money. And if you are a H1, probably some of that cut goes into your uh, uh, employer. It's a different story. Uh, well, uh, it's highly uh, lucrative, at least in the testing field. When I say testing field, whether you are doing manual testing or a database testing, or an ETL testing, or automation using RFT, QTP, Selenium. Um, this is either on par with them or better than them. 
Okay, so uh, eighty dollars an hour is quite some bit of money. You know, better than probably some of the developers as well. Okay, um, and even in the testing field, it's most sought after, most respected field um, because there are fewer jobs and there are fewer people. Okay, there's always demand for this, and also. Uh, it's a more soft after. I've seen a lot of manual testers when they want to make a move, uh, they want to become performance testers. A lot of, lot of people because it's that's the kind of respect these performance testers get. Okay. And one more thing, <clears throat> when it comes to opportunities, what I figured out is there are fewer jobs out there in performance testing, but there are fewer people who are fewer good performance testers out there. So there's always a demand for that. You go to, in India, you go to any drive, okay? When you say manual testers, if there are 50 positions, at least there will be a line of 500 to 600 people. And then, then the automation testers, you know, there are certain positions, there are fewer people than manual testers. And then performance testers, you know, there will be hardly five to 10 opportunities, but the people who come is also probably like, you know, 15 or 20 max, okay? So there are few positions, but there are fewer people out there, especially when it comes to performance testing, okay? And <clears throat> here's the thing, there is a definite job satisfaction, okay? Because it's challenging, not in terms of coding, there's not too much of coding required, but there is a lot of analysis and you have to, you have to have a idea on a lot of stuff like architecture, um, uh, you know, networking, uh, servers, uh, and databases. You have to have knowledge and all this, which you will uh, gain over this, over this course. And not only in all these fields, but obviously on the tool called Loadrunner itself. So you have to have knowledge on all of that, which you will definitely learn as a part of this course. And uh, one thing I can tell you is it's not a mundane job. Manual, if you're probably going as a manual tester, so there's one week of learning, and after that, you will be doing that for the rest of your life, maybe, uh, unless you change the project. But here, when it comes to load runner, every day there is something new to learn. Okay, you coordinate with all these people, server admins, database admins, network admins, developers, performance engineers, you coordinate with all of them, and there's definitely there's a lot of learning every every day that you do. So yes, you need some respect, and you want some job satisfaction, and you want it to start feeling that yes, I am a software engineer. Then this is one of the field that you have to be. I'm not saying that this is the only field. Yes, but this is one of the field. I think I've spoken enough. Now you can you know take a call whether you want to be a performance tester or not. And probably you can touch base with some of the people, like you know, maybe your brothers, sisters who have been already been there in the industry. Probably you should talk to them as well to see uh, what is this, what it is like performance tester. Syllabus uh, over this 25 to 30 days, uh, we have designed this uh, course. Um, we've designed it, you know, according to the industry needs as to what. Uh, the industry need at this point of time, definitely based on that. And not everything possible has been included and it's not possible as well. Uh, not only this, but you, you're taking up any course, uh, everything possible cannot be included. But what is that which is important and what is that which will get you started and what is that the industry needs? We've done enough research on that and then we have added that as a part of the coursework, okay? And uh, this course is so designed that it is suitable but both for novice and experienced guys. As in, uh, in other words, uh, I've included the real basics of performance testing and also not only uh, the, uh, the basics, but as the course go forward, uh, the really advanced topics are also uh, covered. Uh, some of the topics are so covered that uh, probably a three years or two years experienced performance tester would have a lot of learning to do as well. Um, uh, most of my courses, you know, people join, um, they are uh, mostly two years, three years, and one year experience. And before they join, they will be a little tentative saying that, I know all this, Kumar. Um, I don't know what is the value addition. 
But by the end of the course, they, they come back and say that, oh, this, there was so much to learn from the course. There's so much that we didn't know. Now I feel much more confident as a performance tester. There's so much that I've learned. Okay. So I kind of like, you know, open up the whole tool for you. That's what I do uh, as a part of this course. Yeah, and uh, regular assignments are given, if not daily, but wherever is required. And I expect that you do, you complete those assignments and get back to me. And uh, after the class is done, you know, I expect them to stay back so that, you know, in front of them while doing the screen sharing, I kind of uh, clear the assignments. And one more thing uh, um, um, about my course is it's a full two play. That's what I call it. Uh, it's, in other words, it's highly interactive. Uh, you know, as a, as a course is going on, you can post the questions um, and then I ask the questions and expect uh, the whole class to answer. Uh, that's the kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, way I do it. And uh, what I cover as a part of this course, uh, hopefully it's already been uh, shared. If not, uh, uh, let me quickly open that. And if not, uh, I, I, I cannot go through each and every topic, but on the high level, I quickly go through so that you get an idea as to what I cover as a part of this course. Um, architecture basics. I believe it's very, very important for performance tester as to what is architecture, understanding the architecture. I'll cover all of that. And uh, the terms like response times, transaction response times, transaction, performance testing, life cycle, NFR, I'll cover all that as a part of introduction to performance testing. And NFR gathering, very, very important again, what kind of requirements that you have to gather. I, I kind of, uh, you know, uh, explain that in very detail. I also cover workload modeling, okay? Very important for as a performance tester. Then we get into the load runner tool, what are the components, we play around with the view gen. Uh, I cover only web HTTP, HTML as a part of this course, okay? So a lot of C functions are also discussed, okay? Like ATO, ITO, Sprintf, STR, CMP, uh, how to act, call different actions, loops, okay? And then correlations, okay? Uh, I spent like two to three hours, good two to three hours only on the correlations. LR functions like LR safe string, LR param, Sprintf, and all that. Checkpoints, transactions, okay? Parameterization. Error handling, very, very important, okay? Then we get into the controller. We'll do how, what the controller is, how can we execute the script using the controller, and finally the analysis part, okay? Finally, the analysis part. So this is what I cover as a part of the course, okay? So if you don't have this, just request for it. I'll send across this syllabus to you, uh, or else it's already put, put it's, it's already there on the website. You can get it out from there, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> there's some questions coming in. Let me take these questions. $80 for how much of experience? Uh, well, uh, uh, Kale, uh, probably I would say four to five years of experience is what, um, you know, we are talking about $80. Uh, but two years, uh, something like that, probably you'll get $40 to $50. Okay, so next question from Kale is, so you must be perfect and experienced because not many people are working in that field. I, I, it's not about that. You must be perfect and experienced because not. it's not about that, you know, whether you are experienced in that. I mean, there are many people are not, uh, but, you know, definitely with, with time you get that experience. Okay. So uh, there's one more question. Can you give me some companies who have more jobs in performance testing? Yes. Uh, at least in India, I can talk about all that because right now I'm in the India market. Um, Accenture, Cognizant, Wipro, Infosys, you know, uh, recently I, I heard that, uh, uh, what is that banking, uh, Bank of America, um, uh, uh, what is that bank, can you name, that? I can't remember the banks, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Satyam has a lot of openings recently, uh, Mahindra Satyam, uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of banks who have jobs, uh, depends, you know, uh, but there are quite some positions out there. Okay, so there's some groups out there, WhatsApp groups, which discuss a lot about the job openings at different places. 
So if you're interested, probably I can, you know, get you into that group and probably, you know, you can look at that activity. Uh, in your company, you don't have a performance tester role. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, let me uh, let me take that question in your company. It's not there. Not every company can afford it uh, Sheila, I hope you I got your name correct uh, Because one thing is the performance testing is expensive. Okay, when we have to create that environment That's expensive the resources itself. It's expensive. The tool is expensive and then one more thing is especially if it's a banking sector insurance sector help telecom uh, and e-commerce. Uh, these are the sectors who, who usually get their applications performance tested. Okay, so not sure uh, in which sector your company falls into. Okay, and it has to be a medium to big scale company so that they can implement it. Because as I told you, Sheila, it's a little expensive to actually get uh, get the performance testing implemented in your company. Okay, so <clears throat> simple thing: you want your applications to be fast. You care about your end customers. You definitely, the performance testing has to be part of your company. Okay, definitely. <clears throat> Sunita has a question for us. If you are parallelly learning Selenium, I hope it's not confusing. Uh, definitely not confusing, but you have to pull out enough time so that you can practice both of this, Sunita. Okay. So a lot of students, whether you are doing the things parallelly or not, whether you're learning the tools parallelly or not, but this is one thing I would request all the students. When you listen in the class, everything is easy. Okay. So it, it looks easy. It sounds easy. It feels, like if, it feels like, yeah, this is the piece of cake and I should be able to do it. But only when you practice, you would start learning so many challenges. You would start learning the tool and you get to see a lot of challenges okay this is when you get comfortable so if you are doing both the courses uh, uh, Sunita, i would suggest that you pull out some time every day at least half an hour for each of those tools and one more thing is most of the concepts in both the tools are equal like checkpoints okay like parameterization okay the concept wise it's same but the implementation could be different so in that way yeah uh, it will not be confusing. It will aid. I mean, it will assist you. It will help you. But the thing is, you have to pull out enough time so that you can you can learn. Uh, you can spend some time on the tool and do the assignments as well. Okay. So Paramesh has a question for us. If you have both Selenium and performance testing experience in your resume, is it going to add on for getting the job? Uh, not sure. Not sure about that. But definitely you're improving your scope because you're applying for both selenium as well as performance testing and if there is a small company okay definitely it will add because they might look for one resource who would do all this is when uh, it may it might be a value addition but uh, uh, does it have a huge value addition in whichever company you go for uh, i'm not quite sure about that okay so in US, uh, if you're talking about uh, North America, that's US uh, uh, Sunita uh, and Canada, uh, definitely yes, okay? It has a very good job market and especially from the last two to three months, uh, it's been doing good from February after Christmas. Uh, overall, uh, I heard it's, been, it's doing good and a lot of my students were getting a lot of calls on performance testing as well. So yes, uh, as for my knowledge, definitely yes from what I heard from my students. Okay, so I hope I've answered all those questions, I've taken all those questions. So let's move forward. <clears throat> Take away. So one is the latest version that I use for the training, which is 12.53, okay. Uh, with a lot of examples, hands-on examples, okay, and give you assignments as well. And if you would request, I can give you a project by the end of the course on a different application, okay, so that uh, you get an overall feel for VUGEN controller and analysis, okay. And uh, I cover both the basics and advanced, as I've told you earlier. And uh, 
course content has been designed as i told you uh, depending upon the job market and uh, the, the 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 current load on the requirements okay uh, wherever for whichever the topics i'll try to give you some assignments uh, you know uh, regularly and <clears throat> yeah uh, you will be by the end of the course um, if you if you have done the project well and taken the assignments well you would be ready you would be ready to start working on the view gen and start creating the scripts and all that so that's about it guys so let me get uh, get into the course okay uh, as i've told you uh, you know uh, as you ask the questions okay uh, probably after two, uh, the questions gets accumulated, okay. So I'll I'll go for twenty minutes, and after twenty minutes, I'll take all the questions, okay, uh, from you. And exactly at uh, seven fifteen, okay, which is forty five minutes after the class is started, seven fifteen a.m. IST, I'll take a five minutes break, okay, or we will take a five minutes break, and uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll. And intermittently, I'll check the questions and I'll try to answer the questions all at once. Uh, if you have a mic handy, <coughs> it will be helpful as well. Uh, <coughs> I'll take the last question before I can get started on this. Uh, Paramesh, Loadrunner is an open source or a license tool. Uh, Paramesh, it's a license tool, uh, but there is a community edition which is available. Okay, This community edition is only for people like you and me who wants to learn the tool practice the tool. This edition comes with a 50 user license for a lifetime. So once you install, you have it for a lifetime. And it is a legal license that you're installing, okay, from their website, which is Microfocus. And you can have the tool forever and you can practice the tool. So I hope the question that you have asked is more on the lines that how will I get the tool, okay? So yes, there is a community edition for 50 users for lifetime access. But if you're implementing a project, you have to uh, you have to buy this tool. Shermila asked a question: Do you have a tentative schedule in terms of date you are planning on starting the course? Yes, I'm starting the course. If you are in India, uh, if you are in India, I'm starting the course on 9th of April, and uh, I think in US it will be 8th, I believe. Yeah, 8th evening, and uh, for India it's 9th morning. Okay, that's when I'm starting the course, Shermila. Well, let's let's start it. <clears throat> Most of you might be from the manual testing team, so I thought you know appropriate to add this over here. The overall software testing can be broadly divided into two things, guys: functional testing and then non-functional testing. Most of you might be knowing functional testing, but I'll take a couple of examples so that. Somebody doesn't happen to they get an idea as to what it is. Let's take you have a car, okay? And you're doing the testing. You're testing the steers, you're testing the brake, tires, and all those different parts of the car, okay? That is more like your functional testing, okay? <clears throat> but, okay, but you're checking how fast your car are going to drive the car is going to drive, how fast it can go uh, with certain number of people sitting in the car. Certain number of people sitting in the car is probably the load that you're adding on the car and how fast you can drive the car. Then it is more like non-functional testing and precisely performance testing. Okay, this is more like non-functional testing but precisely performance testing. By the way, I'll start using the term NFT, which means that non-functional testing. Okay, so you're testing certain parts of the car. Probably, you know, it, it's an analogy that I'm taking. Okay, it's probably like a functional testing where you're testing different things on the application. But how fast your car is driving? Okay, then yeah, it is a non-functional testing and precisely a performance testing. Now, we'll go back to that slide, okay, and see, I'll not go back to the slide, but let's see what is functional testing in terms of application. Uh, throughout the course, I'll take Gmail because 
I take this either Gmail or a banking applications. Banking because all my life I've spent on banking doing the performance testing. Okay. And uh, Gmail, I'll take it because all of you would have used it. So if I've taken something else, some of them you would have used it or not. But Gmail is something like, you know, wherever you are in the world, you would have used it. So that's that's the application that I would like to take as as for, for my examples. Well, <clears throat> let's take your Gmail is what you're testing. By the way, whatever the application that you are testing, you call it as AUT. You call it as AUT. Uh, any guesses as to what is this AUT is? Can anybody give me an answer as to what is this AUT is? Heard this term before? AUT or SUT? Okay, just type it out, guys. You know, um, uh, just just, just uh, type it out. Yeah, application under test. Okay, yeah. Somebody raised the uh, uh, hand. Uh, it's okay. Just just type it out there. Okay. <clears throat> uh, application under test, obviously. Okay, so let's say Gmail is my AUT. Whether you're doing manual testing, security testing, automation, or performance testing, the application that you're testing is, is what we call it as AUT. Okay, you're checking the functionality of the application. When I said functionality, let's see what is this functionality. Okay, you give correct credentials for the username and password you click on the sign in button and if the application logs in okay you are able to log into the application you know then you say that yeah my login application or my login functionality is working fine okay now what you do as a manual tester you give incorrect incorrect credentials like you enter the right username wrong password or wrong username right password or wrong username wrong password then try to log in You'll not be able to log into the application. It's doing the application is doing whatever it's supposed to. Then you think that yeah, my application is working fine, or the functionality of my application is working fine. So all this, okay, whatever you're doing, this kind of testing, okay, whatever you're doing, you call it as functional testing. You call it as functional testing. Okay, so. <clears throat> If you're wondering, yeah, what could be the other testing that could be there other than checking the functionality? There are, and one of the things is how fast you are able to log into the application. Obviously, you have entered the right username, right password, clicked on the login button. You are not checking whether you are logging in or not because there are that's all obviously been or already been tested by a functional tester. Okay, you're not doing that. But you're checking how fast I'm able to log in. Then that's what you call it as performance testing. And it falls under non functional testing. It falls under non functional testing. Okay, I have some questions coming in. Let me take that. Okay, thank you, Karthik, if you're there on the call. Okay, uh, yes, hang on, let's carry forward. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go back to the previous slide. Functional testing, uh, there are different kinds of functional testings, like system testing, system integration, regression, UAT, wherever you're checking the functionality of the application, wherever, okay? It's all considered to be functional testing, okay? Um, or people popularly call them as manual testers, functional testers, system testers, and all that. Okay, so as a part of functional testing, <clears throat> there are different testings like system testing, system integration testing, regression, and UAT. I'm not going to go deep and explain what are the differences because that's not the class that we we are here. That's not how I've designed. But just to get you a sneak peek as to what kind of testings fall under functional testing. I kind of added it over here, okay? Um, my concentration here is non-functional testing. Any testing where you are not testing the functionality, but you're testing something else other than that, okay? I've already told you what is testing the functionality. Wherever you're thinking that I'm not testing the functionality, then that will be non-functional testing. For example, for example, 
performance testing okay for example performance testing <clears throat> you're checking how fast my application is working okay if you're testing for that then you call it as performance testing and it falls under non-functional testing and it falls under non-functional testing you're testing how securely i'm able to log into the application okay is my data safe how securely i'm able to make a particular payment is my credit card data my cvv and all that is safe if you're testing that then we call it as security testing okay it's also doing pretty good in the market Compatibility testing. Compatibility could be with different operating systems or it could be different browsers. Usability, failover, all this forms, falls under non-functional testing. And if you're wondering if these are the only five uh, which are non-functional, no, there are 20 to 30 non-functional testings out there. Okay. And performance testing is the most sought after popular one, well paid in all of that non-functional testing then comes security testing, then comes other testings, okay? I've worked in the industry for quite some time, okay? Uh, probably 11 to 12 years. And from the last two years, I've been doing only trainings. And <clears throat> I've, been, I've seen a lot of manual testers, automation testers, performance testers, even security testers, but I haven't seen people saying that, oh, I'm a compatibility tester. It is there, I'm a user accessibility tester. They are there, but they are few jobs out there okay performance testing is the most sought after and well paid and a lot of positions are there and good in demand when it comes to non-functional testings okay so the point which i'm trying to make here is a lot of people think that performance testing is the only non-functional testing but you have to know that it is one of the many non-functional testings out there Okay, at this point of time, I would want to make one point clear. One second. <clears throat> if you're a functional tester, okay, and you found some issues in the application, okay, for example, even with the incorrect credentials, you're able to log in, then the application is not doing what it is supposed to do. Then we call that as a defect or a bug. Okay. For example, after making the payment, okay, after making the payment, it should display the message saying that, oh, your order is successful and we will be shipping out the product soon. That is the kind of message that you're expecting but <clears throat> it is not displaying anything like that okay uh, it is probably displaying that your payment is done that's it okay and it is not giving the shipping order number nothing okay then that's not the right functionality then you call that as a bug or a defect informally bug formally defect okay in other words any deviation from the requirement there is a certain requirement that is being given to you saying that only with the correct credentials, my application should lock in. But even with the incorrect credentials, it is logging in. Then this is a deviation from the requirement. And any deviation from the requirement, when it comes to performance testing, we call that as a defect. Any deviation from the requirement, when it comes to performance testing, we call them as a bottleneck. Okay. What is this bottleneck? How these bottlenecks are caused and all that? We'll discuss that in detail as we go further okay there is something called architecture wherein we discuss about different servers okay and when we discuss about that how and how they coordinate with each other that's when we'll discuss about the bottlenecks okay but right now <clears throat> if you're a performance tester and you find some deviation from the requirement or in simple words you found an issue or in simple words you find that the application is very slow or slow okay then you say that oh i have a defect in the application no you don't say that you say that there is a bottleneck because of which the application is slow 
Okay. If you are a security tester, you call it as vulnerabilities. Okay. So depending upon which testing you are, you use that kind of term. But <clears throat> all of them are deviation from the requirements, but different testings have different terminologies. If you're a functional tester, it's called defect, performance tester, bottlenecks, security testing, vulnerabilities, and other testers, they call it by different names. Okay. But what I want you to start using the term is the bottleneck. Because a lot of people, when I was a manager, a lot of people do come into the performance testing field and they still continue to use the terms and they will be moving from manual testing field. I see a lot of people moving from manual testing into performance testing. And they still, terms, they, they still try to use the term defects or bugs. Kumar, I found a defect, you know, this particular uh, functionality is extremely slow and all that. So how should I report to the developer? What is my next step? The first thing that you have to do is don't use the term defect. Okay, you say there is a bottleneck in the application or I found a bottleneck because of which my application is slow. Okay. On that note, let me tell you what is performance or okay, not what is performance testing. We will get into what is performance testing uh, <clears throat> even before that. Okay defining what is performance testing why performance testing okay why I have to do something called performance testing why this company has to shell out so much money into performance testing what is the significance of it what will happen if i don't do performance testing in other words in simple words what will happen okay if a company doesn't do performance testing one of the students i think sunita Somebody as Sharmila has asked this question. My company doesn't do performance testing. She said there's no roles of performance testers, which means that she doesn't do, I mean, their company doesn't do performance testing. So we try to understand what happens if you don't do performance testing. Ah, Parmesh, wonderful. Okay, some of them already giving me answers. <clears throat> okay, and one more thing guys, in all of my examples, I take Mark. Okay, Mark is a fictional character. He is not there. He is not a realistic character. But all my examples will be in and around Mark. Okay, and you will start loving this guy called Mark. Okay, who's who's not there. Okay, so he wants to buy a mobile phone. <clears throat> so what did he do? Obviously, okay, he went online. Okay, he is in a software guy. You see, Mark. Okay, we guys always do everything online, right? So he also wants to purchase his desire for online. And how much it costs is a thousand dollar phone, okay? Probably it's an iPhone, I don't know, okay? <clears throat> so he has given the credit card details, click on enter, and you see, this is the point, okay? After he has given the credit card details, after he has given the CVV number, and click on the payment, and the OTP, everything he has given, and he clicked on the pay button and how much time he has to wait? He has to wait for two minutes for the request to get processed. And after two minutes, you see, after he has clicked on the payment button and he has to wait for two minutes, after two minutes, he will see this message saying that, thank you for shopping with us. This is the uh, order number and blah, 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 and all that. Okay, everything has happened the way it is supposed to, okay? He has entered the, he has searched for the phone, he has added to the cart, he has given the credit card details, he has given the CBB, OTT, OTP number, everything. And he, he caught that order number as well. There are no issues with that. But my problem is he has to wait for two minutes and see what happens in these two minutes. And he is buying a thousand dollar phone and imagine what happens for these two minutes. Okay. Uh, what, what goes on in Mark's mind? If you were Mark, what you would be thinking? Oh my God, it's a thousand dollar phone. I've given my credit card details. Now it's been two minutes and it's still, sh it's not sh it's still showing that there will be a circle. Okay, it's still showing that circle symbol. Oh my God, in case my transaction doesn't go through, what happens? Is my, is my credit card gets debited? And if that is the case and if the transaction is not booked or the transaction is not marked, who should I call to? Should I call Amazon or should I call my credit card? And it's a thousand dollar phone, it's such a headache. 
and you might be thinking that, oh my God, I'll never use this website again. Okay? That's the reason why. Okay? People are not happy when the, when the website is slow, especially the business critical uh, functionality. Here, the credit card functionality, you know, you know, the processing the credit card functionality is the business critical. Okay, when those kind of functionalities are slow, the people are very, very unhappy. And psychologically, what happens is they will never come back to this website again. Okay, so people are not happy. Here we are talking about just that particular functionality. Imagine every single functionality is slow. Okay, when you search for this iPhone, it took two minutes for you to display all the phones. Okay, then you compare different phones. You have selected two phones and you click on compare. It took two minutes before, you know, it shows the comparison screen. Then you click on add to cart. Again, it took two minutes. If the application is this slow, I'm sure you'll never go back to the application. Two things, you don't have the patience. Second thing is it gives you such a bad impression on the website saying that it could be some, you know, junk website. You know, it, it, it gives a bad impression on the website. To the end customer so in this case everything happened smoothly for mark but only the credit card related functionality took a while just for that is not happy okay only one functionality is not working that fast is not happy and imagine imagine after two minutes okay after two minutes instead of getting displaying this message you got this message saying that oh my god you know http 404 error okay now you are in a soup. You don't even know what to do. Uh, first thing you'll do is you go to the bank and see, you know, bank statement and see, or your credit card statement and see whether my thousand bucks has been uh, uh, debited. Okay. If that happens, you are even in such a big world. Now you have to call all of them to see what has happened with that money. Okay. Definitely you're going, if, if this happens, if this happens, you're not going to that website again. Okay. Uh, it happened with me certain times and I never went to the website, definitely. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you see, if your application is slow, okay, then customer will move. There are a lot of options to the customer these days. If you're in India, this is a very, very popular. Okay. If you're not happy with one e-commerce application, there are hundreds out there and you'll start moving out and then doing your shopping on other websites. Like Flipkart or eBay or Jabong or Snapdeal or any other shopping websites. So the customer have options these days, okay? And then they will move out. And if they're not coming to your website, they're not coming to your website to shop, there are no customers in your for your website, then definitely you're not doing good business. And at some point of time, you will close, okay? So if the application is slow and customer is not happy, he's not coming to your website again. Okay, as a business owner, if you're a business owner of that, you're losing a lot of customers and hence the business. And finally, now you know, or at least you would have realized why performance testing is required. Now the performance testing is required. Yes, you don't want to piss your end customer off. Okay, if, if he is not happy, okay, he's not coming to your website. Now the, the clients, the clients or the business owners, let me start using the word business owners, do everything possible so that the customer will come to your website again and again. They will do a lot of things, making the websites flashy, very user-friendly, uh, nice things they will add from the front end. And also they make sure the performance is fast as well. Okay, so to make your end customers, clients do a lot of things and one of the things that they do is performance testing or make sure the applications are fast. Okay, so to put all these things together into perspective, okay, I've kind of summarized whatever we have discussed so far. Bad performance is bad for business, okay. Lack of performance testing results in, you know, results in loss of revenue, okay. There's loss of revenue because the customers are not coming to your website. Loss of credibility, okay and eventually loss of customers. This is the precise reason why we do performance testing. Okay, so on this note, I'll take a break, five minutes break. It's 7.22 India time, okay? 
So we'll take a five minutes break exactly till 7.27. I'll stop recording, okay? And one of you please remind me as soon as I come back, you know, to start recording, okay? So <clears throat> hang on. I'll be on mute, folks, until then. Welcome back. <clears throat> Achin, I was on break, so probably that's the reason why you were not able to hear. Okay, so <clears throat> welcome back. Let's continue. Just give me, just tell me one thing. Uh, are you able to hear me? Are you able to hear me? Okay. Uh, yes, Kumar, we can hear you. Well, uh, performance testing is expensive as compared to other testings. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> in general, you know, it involves lots of money. I think I've told you this. Uh, when it when it compare when you when you compare it to manual testing or automation testing, it's a little expensive. No wonder why all the clients implement it. Okay. It involves a lot of money. Why? Because the tools are expensive, the load runner tool is very expensive, and uh, the performance testers, the resources, what I mean, okay, are very expensive, okay, and uh, we need a full scale infrastructure. This particular point, okay, I'll not be able to explain it clearly at this point of time, but you know, when we discuss about the architecture, okay, when we understand what is a web server, app server, database server and what is an infrastructure or what is an environment, this is when I will be able to tell you what is the difference between a performance testing environment or any other testing environment and why we need a full scale environment. And if he, if he needs a full scale environment, definitely you know, a lot of money is involved in that. So yes, so because of these three reasons, the tools, the resources and, uh, and the environment itself, uh, it's pretty expensive performance testing. To get it implemented in your company okay so in spite of all this okay in spite of all this the clients get their applications performance tester so you kind of realize like how important performance testing is okay now okay <clears throat> we understand why performance testing is required okay we did understood because if they are slow then the customers are not coming back to your application so why will these applications actually become slow Okay, why do these applications become slow? Okay, so always my slide starts with why and then we'll discuss what, okay, or how. So <clears throat> now we'll go back to our Mark, okay. He bought a new motor bicycle, so he's joined an IT company, he's getting a lot of money. So he's already have a car, now he bought a motor bicycle, okay. And look at it, he's the only guy sitting on the bike or, uh, or a motor bicycle, okay, and he's riding it. Since he's the only guy sitting, he goes really fast. You see, he goes pretty fast. Why? Because he's the only guy sitting on it. Now, Mark has a friend, okay? So, <clears throat> now he's riding with him. Now, you see, now both of them are going. The bike goes a little slower, okay? So, it's a little slower than before. Why? Because there is a load now. It's Earlier also there was a load, but now the load has increased or earlier there was one person, now there are two people riding on the bike. So the load on the bike or precisely the load on the engine of the bike has increased. So the performance has deteriorated a little bit. Now, <clears throat> I know you're not supposed to drive with three people, but for whatever the reason, there are three people sitting on the bike and driving. Okay, so Mark, Mark, two of his friends. Now there is even more load on the bike, okay? The, as the load is increasing, you see, the performance is deteriorating even further. So this is a universal law, guys, wherever, wherever the situation, whatever the situation, the load on a particular thing is increasing, the performance of that particular thing deteriorates. I think that's a universal law, okay? So maybe your bike, maybe on your surface, Forget about all that. If you are a software uh, IT guy, and if you're working for eight hours a day, the performance will be one day. If you're working two hours a day, the performance could deteriorate, okay? Okay, and if you're working 16 hours a day, 
with lack of sleep and all that, the performance deteriorates even further. Okay, so <clears throat> the kind of thing that it's a universal law when the load increases on something, the performance deteriorates. Okay, so maybe your mark bike or maybe your applic application. When I said application, application could what I meant was a Gmail is an application for me, a Flipkart or Amazon is an application. I mean, Amazon online shopping market is an application. Okay. Uh, your Gmail is an application, your banking, like Bank of America, your online banking application, that's an application. Okay, uh, so any software application is what I meant an application. Okay, so, <clears throat> so <clears throat> multiple users using the application at the same point of time. Okay, so there's a lot of people using that application at the same point of time, and those users are increasing then the load on the application increases then the application might become slow if it's not performance tested and performance tuned if it's not properly performance tested and performance tuned then the application might become slow okay so <clears throat> even on our mark example so there is these three guys riding on the bike at the same point of time okay there's three guys riding this bike at the same point of time okay not like first mark and after that his friend and after that his friend no all the three of them are sitting on the bike and riding it so in our performance testing language we call them as concurrent users okay because they are riding the bike at the same point in time okay similarly if there are multiple users using the application at the same point in time which means that you know, let's take the Gmail application. Okay, I, I have a slide for that. Uh, for now, just ignore that. So, <clears throat> yeah, multiple users using this application at the same point in time. Okay, at the same exact time, there are multiple users using it. Then we call that as a concurrent users. And if the concurrent users are increasing, okay, if the concurrent users are increasing, then the load on the application increases and there is a chance that the application performance can go down. Okay. Or applications becomes slow. <clears throat> now we'll discuss what is performance testing. Earlier we have discussed why performance testing. Okay, now that we have understood why performance testing, why the applications become slow, now this is a good time to understand what is performance testing. We'll go back to our Gmail application and let's assume it's your AUT or application under test. Okay, we have this application used by multiple users. In this case, let's say there are four users using this application. One, two, three, and four. These are all the real users. And you see, these guys are using this application called Gmail at the same point of time. If you're in India, right now the time is 7.37 a.m. Okay, so <clears throat> what is the time? 7.37 a.m. This is the time right now in India. Okay. So at this same point in time, at this same point in time, at 7.37 a.m., there are four people using this application. Okay. There are four people using this application. So at the same point in time, there are multiple users using this application. These four users, we can call them as concurrent users. What do we call them as? Concurrent users because they are using the application simultaneously. Okay. Simultaneously or concurrently okay which application the gmail application okay now there is certain load that is created by this four users okay you see these users are using this application at the same point of time or same point in time okay these are called concurrent users as i've told you okay now these concurrent users are creating the load on the application uh, for users, not too much load, but load. Yeah, some sort of load it is creating. So <clears throat> while the load is being created, while the load is being created, performance needs to be checked. Okay, so we have to check the performance of the application. There is a load which is being created by these users. So <clears throat> while the load is being created, now you check the Gmail application if it is fast or slow. Okay, so if it is fast, then there's no issues, good enough. Wonderful. If it is slow, 
then definitely you have to report to the developer or yeah you have to devote, report to the developer or we say performance engineers saying that the application is slow now if the application is slow you would say that or oh, there is defects in the application or you would say there is bottlenecks in the application what would you say guys it's a question for you okay what would you say okay now with the four four people using it there is a load that is getting created and now you have checked the performance and the performance is bad performance is bad means the application is slow if the performance is bad and the application is slow okay then what would you say uh, there is a defect in the application or you would say oh there is a bottleneck you have to go report to the developer or performance engineer okay when you when you go report it you would say uh, is a defect or a bottleneck okay there is a bottleneck in the application thanks manjula sharmila and roxana okay uh, there is a hand raised okay so uh, uh, there is uh, wasant wasant okay almugam has raised the hands go ahead speak wasant go ahead speak you have raised your hand i have my speakers up wasant armugam uh guys can you hear me can you hear me hello yes kumar we are able to hear you okay wonderful <clears throat> okay so you'd say there's a bottleneck in the application guys okay you'd say there is a bottleneck in the application so <clears throat> oh oh hang on guys one second So guys, uh, if I asked any question, try to you know, put it that, write it down and put it down in the queries. Okay, uh, that becomes easy for me to look at all the answers. Uh, if you raise the hands and allow for multiple speakers to speak, then it consumes a lot of time. Not that you know I'm stopping you from talking. Okay, I would really appreciate that, but you know there's a lot of people and everybody starts speaking. It becomes a little bit of mess. So I would allow you to speak, uh, but. after the whole class is done if you have any questions and you feel comfortable speaking to me rather than typing it out there yeah just raise the hands at that point of time allow you to speak but if you have any questions or i ask you a question and you're answering it use that queries window and then you can you know put your answers out there and time to time you know i'm checking that window of mine or question uh, of mine okay so are you going to cover the same concepts on 28th as well no i'll try to cons uh, try to concentrate on some other topics manjula so whatever you have heard today will be different from whatever you are hearing uh, in my next demo session okay okay so now now that we understood what is performance testing what is performance testing it's not testing the just the performance of your application but under load you want users to use it and then once once the users are using it uh, or in other words when there are concurrent users there is a load that is getting created under the load you have to check the performance of the application so there is a challenge here guys okay my gmail client or the business owner owner of the gmail said there are not four concurrent users but there are 4000 concurrent users using the application that's the kind of load i have on my gmail now you do your performance testing so obviously you have to create that kind of load so you cannot apply the load of four users okay and you check the performance and you can say that the application is working fast no you don't do that you do you do apply the load as to what happens in the real world for gmail in the real world for gmail let's assume there are 400 uh, sorry 4000 concurrent users concurrent users as in the users using this application at the same point in time okay so that's the load that happens on the gmail and you are you are supposed to do performance testing on that so you don't apply the load of 4 but you are supposed to apply the load of 4000 so what you going to do four means you can ask some of your friends to come over and ask them to use this application 
okay while they are using the application probably you can test you can do the you can you can check if the performance is good or bad or if the application is slow or fast but if it's 4000 where will you get this 4000 people from and that too just for performance testing it's not feasible it's not practical then what is the solution is there a workaround for this is there a way that we can we can uh, we can solve this issue okay yes with the concept called v users what does the v stands over here virtual users what is virtual what is virtual something which is not real okay I, I hope you already know what is virtual. Virtual is something that is not real, okay? So there is a concept of virtual users in performance testing. And with these virtual users, we will solve the problem statement or the issue that we are facing earlier. What was the issue? You can't get 4,000 real concurrent users just for our testing. So for that, we replace these real users with virtual users, okay? So what are virtual users? Whatever I've explained, I put that in the form of a slide. There are these real users, okay? Now, imagine I have took an example of 4,000, but in the slide there are 1,000. So whether it's 4,000 or 1,000, it's a huge number, okay? So can we have this 1,000 real users? No, then this is what we have, a virtual user, or they have abbreviated it and they call it as V users, okay? So what are these V users, okay? So the real users are these guys, okay? So the real users are these guys who are sitting on the computers and then using this Gmail application, okay? But what are virtual users? They are machine-generated users, okay? There is a machine called LG machine. There is a machine called LG machine when it comes to performance testing or the tool called Load Runner. There is something called LG machine. What does L stands for? Load. And what does G stands for? Generator. LG is not your brand LG, okay? Like TVs and all that, not that LG, but here in performance testing, LG means load generator, okay? So this LG machine or a load generator machine will give you this virtual users, okay? And they behave like real users. They, they do whatever the real users can do on the application, they can do that on the application, on the Gmail application. If the real user can log into the Gmail application, the virtual user can log into the Gmail application as well. If the real user can uh, or delete a mail, the virtual user can delete a mail. The real user can compose a mail, the virtual user can compose a mail. Yes, whatever the real user can do, the virtual user can do that as well. But the, what the wonderful thing about the virtual user is, you can get as many as you want. You want 4,000, you want 10,000, you want 100,000, you can get those virtual users. But imagine you have to get 100,000 real users, it's not possible. So that's the beauty of performance testing tools. Now you understood why we need something called performance testing tools at all. Okay, so this is the precise reason why we need something called performance testing tool and Load Runner is probably the popular performance testing tool the popular performance testing tool. A lot of performance testing tools out there, which I have a slide and we'll discuss about that. But the most popular one of all of them is the Load Runner. Okay, so it probably have 70% of the market value. There are some other websites who would say 80 to 85%, but I don't believe, but what I heard is it holds 70% of the market value, which means that there are 10 projects which are which are being implemented, the performance testing projects, seven of them use load runner. Okay, so yes. So if you all want to get into performance testing field, then load runner is the right tool for you. Okay, so these virtual users are machine generated users, not real users, obviously. Uh, so this is LG machine generated users to be specific. LG is load generator. Okay, so load generated machine uh, users. You can get as many as you want from this LG machine and they can log into the application, delete the mail, send the mail, change the username, password, everything. But the only problem is you have to train them. You have to train them to log into the application. You have to train them uh, to, to check a mail. You have to train them to delete the mail. How do we do this training and all that? There are quite some, we have 25 days to do that learning. Okay, that, that's what you have to do as a performance testing. 
tester. You have to train these virtual users as to what they're supposed to do. Okay. Now we'll redefine this performance testing. Okay. There's some questions coming in. I'll take those questions after completing this slide. Okay. I'll redefine this. What is performance testing? Okay. Now the same Gmail application, which is your application under test. We were doing it with the real, we were applying, okay, uh, applying the load with the real users, but no, okay. HP Load Runner will give you the virtual users. So you apply the load not with the real users, but with this virtual users, okay. So you apply the load with the virtual users, not with the real users. And now, now you check if the application is your gmail application is fast or slow whether it is whether you're able to log into that application fast you're able to do an attachment fast you're able to send an email fast or you're able to delete an email fast you will check the application in other words the whole application is fast or not is something that you check but not under the real user load but with the virtual user load and this is what is performance testing guys. And this is what is the performance testing. Hang on. <clears throat> okay, so let me wrap up today's session. Okay, let me wrap up today's session with this wonderful slide off here. Okay, with different tools. Okay, there is something called protocols. As I discuss further, when I get into the architecture, I'll clearly tell you what is a protocol. Okay. But right now, just assume that there are protocols. Okay. And these are the popular uh, performance testing tools out there. Okay. Load Runner, WebLoad, VSTS, OpenSTA, Silk Performer, JMeter, and CompuWare QLO. And one tool which is missing in this list is RPT as well. Okay. Rational Performance Tester from IBM. Okay, so these are the different tools which are available. And if you're asking me, these are the only tools? No, there are, there are probably 100 to 200 tools out there. Okay, OATS, uh, WebLoad, uh, Load, STA, uh, quite a few uh, of them out there. Uh, the popular ones, I'll try to pick it up and put it out here. Okay, so as I've told you, Load Runner is the popular one. Okay, uh, as I've told you, it has 70 to 80% of the market share. And no wonder why, because it supports all the protocols suppose all the protocols webload few of them microsoft vsts is also pretty popular okay uh, the other tool which is very popular other than the load runner is jmeter which is picking up big time these days and uh, this is an open source tool okay which means that the client whoever is using it may not have to pay any money okay and uh, are there a lot of open source tools out there other than jmeter as well okay so <clears throat> And Silk Performer, there are quite a, there are a few companies who is, use this, and it supports most of the protocols as well. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> on this note, I'll close this session, guys. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm opening it out for you. I have my speakers up. If anybody wants to speak, please raise the hands. Okay. And keep the mic handy if you want to speak. Okay. And you can post your questions out there uh, in the questions window. I'll continue to uh look into the questions okay so i'll start uh, answering the question one by one we have kale uh, and the question is what ex where exactly in stlc life cycle performance testing will fit in okay so <clears throat> well software development life cycle where does it in fit in okay so i wish i had this uh, sdlc uh, picture in front of me Okay, so I'll tell you when it is done. Once your manual testing is done, okay, or in other words, functional testing is done, or the system testing, to be precise, uh, Kale, once the system testing has been done and your application is stable, the application is stable, that is very, very important. Okay, the application that is not stable and every day you're releasing a new version of your software and uh, deploying it every other day, a new version or a, uh, a new week, every week you're deploying a new version, then this is not an ideal condition to do performance testing. Your performance, when you want to do performance testing, the application has to be stable. This is when you can start executing your performance test. 
okay and uh, 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 kale uh, i haven't answered your question in full because the performance testing itself has a performance testing life cycle which means that there are a lot of stages in performance testing it's not just about execution there are so many things like nfr gathering okay test plan preparation then creating the scripts then executing then the reporting part so if you are asking me when you actually start the performance testing when i say start the performance testing not the execution part but nfr gathering or requirements gathering for functional testing or non functional testing or performance testing you would start ideally uh, probably when when you are in sdlc when you are in coding phase in my in my uh, real time experience what i faced is when the application is in the coding state that's when the performance testing kicks off okay this is when you start collecting the nfrs and then start creating the test plan and all that but when would you start executing the performance test only after your, your system testing is done and the application is fairly stable and i have seen these days we are talking about shift left strategy and some of the project at least i was not involved uh, in those project but some of the my friends told when the actual you know in the sdlc when the requirements you know the initial stage okay initial stage of the sdlc that's when the nfr gathering happens as well that's ideally should happen but not a lot of clients encourage that because they want to save money and all that uh, but some of my friends were involved in those projects as well wherein the project is starting the sdlc is starting that's when the ptlc is also starting as well but i i was involved in that kind of projects no i was involved in such projects wherein your sdlc has started and you are in the coding stage and that's when uh, that's when we start our performance test i mean ptlc that's when we start doing the gathering and all that so it depends okay on your project and all that ideally the whenever the project is starting that's when the performance testing also should start when i said performance testing should start not the execution part but the gathering part and the life cycle of performance testing i will <clears throat> at this point of time you know may not be the right uh, you might not understand the full picture but as we proceed further i'll discuss something called performance testing life cycle this is when you understand that there are different stages this is when i will be able to explain this answer even better okay in simple answer when the project starts your performance testing should start as well okay ideally sharmila has i think i have answered the question uh, kale okay yes yes that's what it means right from the gap okay okay now the next question sharmila is asking this question for us guys if a person has no prior experience in manual testing is this course beneficial for them or is geared towards experienced manual testers to get into performance testing sharmila you know uh, it is not i mean this is one of the scenario okay wherein the, you have like 2 years or 5 years of manual testing experience you want to make a move to performance testing you can take it up okay there is only 30 to 40% of that kind of crowd that kind of crowd uh, but remaining 50 60 is completely new they start their career in performance testing so yes the course is designed for completely freshers okay whether you are a manual tester or a performance tester okay this course is ideal for you okay there is no experience of manual testing required yes in my class i have taken some examples so that you know uh, some people who are manual testers after the class they start about the, they start talking about the comparisons okay so we have done a manual testing we call it as defects you know then you are calling it bottlenecks why so i have a lot of experience lot of experience doing this trainings so i have taken all those questions and put it in my slides so that you know there are no more questions in your mind that is the only reason why you get a feeling that oh this there are so many slides you know customized it uh, with a lot of manual testing jargon or manual testing uh, terms you have used that only because some of the students comes from that field and then they start asking some questions which more like you know in a comparison uh, mode but definitely the whole course is designed in such a way that whether you have any experience in it forget about manual in any experience in it or not you know you will be able to understand this 
okay at any point in time you have any questions you know you feel that it's not appropriate or certain knowledge was priorly required and then i'm moving forward you can Asma, after that, sorry to interrupt you here yeah. can you hear me uh, kumar we have a next session uh, starting on web development so i think we need to end this session here yeah yeah uh, and then can you, uh, uh, can you can you give me three minutes? There are a few more questions. Let me take those quickly. Just three All minutes. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So do log bottlenecks, do we use other bug tools like Jira, Bugzilla to log bottlenecks? Parmesh, you know, we don't have too many, don't assume that you have 100 to 200 bottlenecks. No. If you get one bottleneck itself, it's a big thing. Okay, so we don't have any logging mechanism here, which is communicate with your performance engineer and uh, the developer saying that, you know, you, your application is slow and this is how it is slow. And you assume that it is because of this, 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 the application is slow. There's no tools as such. Okay, uh, do we need to write script coding and which language it is? Yes, uh, most of it will be done by the tool itself. Uh, you have to know a little bit of C language. Okay, C programming language and whatever is required, most of it is covered in the class. And based on that, you can continue to improve your C language script so that you can do like very advanced scripting. But do we require advanced scripting? No, at least not. I have done that or none of my friends. But yes, no, the tool can be very powerful. Okay, yeah, not much coding is required and whatever is required, it's in the C language. So yes, guys, uh, there is another session that starts right now, it seems. Okay, I hope there will be a little bit of time which was given to me to take your more questions. Um, uh, I hope you have enjoyed your session, enjoyed my session. The next session is a continuation of this, which we will meet up tomorrow, day after tomorrow at the same time, two days from now. Thank you. See you then. Bye bye. <coughs> so we are done with the session, Ruksana. Uh, well, well, or uh, um, uh, Asna. Okay, yes. I'm logging out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining in. Thank you.